Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? It's your boy BQ, Impact Lounge YouTube channel. You already know, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. I've done a couple of these so far. If it's your first time checking them out, uh, I decided I want to kind of get in on some of these BTI matches, digital exclusive matches. I'm not going to review them right after they happen necessarily. Uh, you know, but for the sake of getting a little extra content on the channel, I'm going to go over these matches real briefly, just give you some general thoughts. And uh, again, if it's your first time, you know, checking one of these out, I record these with a Bluetooth microphone when I'm on the go. So it's not the best sound quality in the world. You might even hear a little bit of crap in the background. Uh, but that's, that's, uh, that's just how it's going to be. You feel me on that? So we're going to talk uh, BTI. Someone, uh, we were recording the Cool Factor podcast last night. We were reading, you know, the mailbag, one of the comments said we had to check this match out. So made me realize, shit, I haven't watched any of this stuff in a couple weeks. So let's check out uh, Jordan Grace defending the Digital Media Championship versus Lady Frost. So if you haven't checked it out already, and I'm going to link you to it at the very end of this video, uh, I did a podcast about my five predictions for Impact Wrestling in 2022. The very first one I put on there, it was the more negative of the five, uh, was that the Digital Media Championship would be phased out by the end of 2022. Now, I did put a caveat on that. I said, unless they have something to make us care about this championship or make the wrestlers look like they care about it, you know, unless they do something like that by the end of February, the title's going to be dead. It's going to be done for. Um, it's been irrelevant for the last, like, two months. Uh, that's, you know, within the, between Turning Point and Hard to Kill, the title has been a prop. And I strongly felt that, you know, they had another, because we're, you know, little past the middle of January, I felt that they had until about the end of February to, to get it back on track or it was just going to be a joke. The title is kind of a joke in a way, but they do have a concept that they can work with to make us care about it. It's not completely lost. It's just not off to a good start, but it's not, it's not completely lost. So this episode of BTI was actually uploaded... Um, to YouTube. So to my knowledge, it wasn't on Access TV. And uh, I've only ever watched it once on Access TV, and that was because of the uh, Josh Alexander TJP match. Other than that, I haven't had interest and really cared. Every once in a while, check, you know, if the match is interesting, I'll check it out on YouTube. And now that I'm doing this content, I try to watch the match itself. The first thing I noticed was this upload on YouTube, as I'm recording this right now, has. I think it was 126,000 views. And if you look at everything else they upload on there, it's 10,000, 17,000, 20,000. You know, they're not even close to that. And what's something I've said for a while, that YouTube was a, a missed opportunity for them because it is a platform that they can make money whenever they want. All they have to do is upload something good. And that's why I've been bitching about engaging content for the longest time and not um, match clips and, and things like that. Like, have some dedicated YouTube content because people will watch it if they have some content that is engaging and, and they will care about. Just watching what we just watched on Impact, no one cares. So, you can see that in the views. Now, moving BTI uh, to YouTube, I would imagine, makes more sense for them financially. Uh, I mean, this is the way I've put it, and this is uh, this is such common sense, it's crazy. Like, if you want to have money to put to, and I don't know how their finances overall work, okay, let's make that clear, but if you're trying to have extra money for, uh, you know, maybe it has something to do with the venue, or has something to do with the lighting, or you're trying to sign a wrestler, or you're trying to extend a wrestler, or you're trying to give someone a raise, like, you can, there's so much they can make up by being good on YouTube, you know? So this is a good example. I think this is going to be more beneficial because if, you know, uh, let's say 125,000 views times 2, 250 uh, times 4, what's that, 100,000 views extra a month that they're not receiving, that, have they, that they haven't been getting. And that's a, diff, a decent chunk of revenue that they can use for whatever. You feel me on that? So um, 
I think this is a good thing. And it's going to be easier for me to actually watch it and just fast forward on YouTube rather than try to, you know, watch it on my DVR or something like that. Anyway, uh, I think I'd said this in my first couple uploads when I was talking about BTI. The first thing that I, I, that, that grabs me when I'm watching BTI is that it, it's an easier watch than Impact in a lot of ways. You know, the music's better. Um, you know, they do the background music thing too, but it's, it's actual background music. So it's tasteful. It sounds good. It sound you know, I've never said don't put music in the background. It just, you just don't put melodic songs. That's like common sense. So the one they use, it sounds good when, when Josh and Gia are talking, it sound it sounds good. And it's a good role for Josh. And this, uh, when they first announced BTI, I said, this was a good opportunity to grow Gia Miller because at the time she was super robotic on television and she really lets her hair down doing this and I think it's helped her on the show a lot like there's there's a lot of improvement in that girl um, and you know going back to when they announced BTI at first when they said the show's called before the impact I hated it I was like that name sucks and the reason I said that is because everything is always impact this impact that and that's why I like the aftershock name the show sucked, but the, the name was great, and I liked them, um, you know, like thinking outside the box. It, it's difficult to do that. Like, I'm doing this channel. I had to, it had to be Impact something because, you know, I had to let people know what the content was about. Uh, but I threw a lounge on there to be a little more original. But it's, it is difficult to come up with original content that, or original ideas and names that still tie into the word Impact, but... At the same time, every time it's impact this, impact that, it just I was just like, that's that name sucks. And then I also said, you know, BTI was like BTE, you know, sounded similar. But I kind of take it back. I know I take it back 100% because I think for, for a branding standpoint, the BTI term has caught on very well. No one calls it before the impact. It's, it's, it's BTI. It's worked. It's simple. It's easy. People remember it. And um, again, it just—I love the studio setting that they have. The the blue is just more complimentary to what, you know, it's just easier on the eyes, and uh, it just comes off good. I I would be shocked if the same people produced uh, Impact and BTI, because they just feel very very different to me. So anyway, um, let's talk about the match. It's Lady Frost, someone who I've been saying uh, is is a star, that. Uh, you'll hear on the latest Cool Factor, I talk about, you know, Giselle Shaw, and I say she looks like a star. That's different than what I'm saying about Lady Frost. Like, she is a star. Like, to me, uh, Giselle's got a great look, but the Lady Frost is just like the total package in every single way. I just feel like there's so much you can, so much potential with her. She's just really, really good, very nice person in real life. Um, so I was excited to actually watch this match, and it was for the Digital Media Championship against... Jordan Gray. So we're finally getting a title defense. It's looking like Jordan cares about the title. So that's that's the direction I wanted to see it go in. So again, I said the title meant nothing. It meant nothing to the wrestlers, to the fans, but I did think there was a window where you could save it. And it seems like they're going that direction. Lady Frost has a really cool entrance. They're, they've I, I've been begging for a while for just some, some good entrances. Some just different, unique entrances and um it's these moments where i'm like yo someone's listening to me over there because every with the exception of the song every single thing that i've been like yo i'm preaching on you know fix this fix this this is like they're actually doing it now which is just bizarre that i mean i just can't believe it's actually coming to fruition so i really like her entrance the camera the camera the editing is a little choppy um but it's it's good. I, I really like it. it. It's very, very different. They showed her doing the moonsault off the, the Ultimate X. The Ultimate X was done very, very well because they found a way to play into each wrestler's strength and not uh, not beat them to death by keep making them go for the X. You know, like, most likely they only had so much stamina to do that. And, um, you know, they... They took Lady Frost out of the match. When she did that, she was like done for the match. But it was a, it was a moment we'll remember. And you know, ten years from now, when they're still playing the Impact flashback, and they're showing, 
Elix Skipper on the top of the cage and all these all, all, all these things. They're going to show that, you know. So um, she's just she's got such a star quality about her. Uh, I love watching her matches. So this match here with Jordan Grace, the crowd was into it. They were excited. They were feeling it. I don't know if it was done at the beginning of the tapings at the end. I have no idea. It was most likely done in the beginning, kind of like a dark match. But the crowd was really, really into it. And these are two girls that they care about. Jordan Grace is another one. She's just becoming a star, and they should never let her leave. If you think about when Jordan Grace debuted in the company, you know, she was a lot bigger. Um, like, she's what, what I mean is she's leaner now. She's, and, and she's more cut. But, you know, her hair, she didn't do much with her hair. She didn't have lipstick on. Like, she just kind of looked like a, kind of what the gimmick, you know, the gimmick was the power lifter. And that's just what she looked like. And I just, I would have never guessed that she'd be what she is right now. She's one of the best parts of the show, in my opinion. I like her song a lot. You know, they should never let her leave. Absolutely not. Most of this knockouts roster right now, they shouldn't let leave. They're, they're in a really good place right now. So um, they had the match, and it was it was really good. Lady Frost did a blockbuster, which I hadn't seen one of those in a while, and, and uh, you know she delivered it very well. All her all her offense is good. It's crisp. You know, I'm, I'm so happy they brought her on board. And I've said many times she's be she is better as a heel, but to the Impact audience, I don't think she will work as a heel. Like she she was able to pull it off at NWA, but I don't think I think this audience loves her way too much. So I don't see her going that direction. Um, I, I think she's going to remain a, a baby face and a, and a very good one at that. Jordan Grace, on the other hand, she she could switch here soon. I can I can see it happening. They need um they need to breathe some life into the uh, into the division. Well, not real. I mean, it's a good division, but I mean, they just there's a couple girls they just got to do something different with, is what I'm getting at. But Jordan Grace wins with the Grace Driver. wasn't the longest match in the world. We knew she was going to win. Uh, th there was no no doubt about that. I don't really like seeing Lady Frost take losses, and she's probably going to be positioned a little bit as a I don't want to say a jobber, but she's probably not going to have a favorable win loss record in Impact because I don't know how they're going to really do storylines with her. Because they've always struggled to do storylines outside of the title picture. So I think she's going to lose more than she wins, but she's going to be uh, really good. You know, her matches are always going to be excellent. And after the match, Matt Cardona comes out and he basically lets Jordan Grace know that he's going to ch he wants a challenge for the title. He cut a good promo on Impact. And what I really liked is that Impact actually tied BTI into the show, which they don't typically do. Uh, every blue moon they do, but... You know, they tied that angle into the show, which I think is very, very smart. Don't be like Explosion. That was like another planet, and then there was Impact, and they had there was just no correlation between the two. You want to connect uh, BTI and, and Impact. So I think that was a, a very good thing. And uh, I'm interested to see where this goes, because I think it's going to lead to the Matt Cardona heel turn. He's the right opponent. Because of his, you know, internet championship. He said, I made this championship. I am this championship. You know, like, it, he's the perfect uh, person to challenge her for it. And I think he's going to absolutely take the title off her. There's no doubt in my mind about that. And he's probably going to hold it for a while. But Heel Cardona is what that title needs. Um, he, he's, he's just very creative on online and creative uh, on the indies. And right now he's on NWA. He's a heel. And every time he comes out, he's like, where's my music? You know, because NWA doesn't play entrance music. So, you know, it's he's the only person to really acknowledge that in a couple of years that uh, the company's been in existence. And I think it works for him. And, you know, if you haven't caught his heel work, it's good. And I think this is going to gonna launch that. And uh, it's a good feud for Jordan Grace. And, you know, Impact likes to do the intergender stuff. She's the one who can do it the best on the roster. If they were to bring back Taya Valkyrie, then she would, you know, give her a run for her money in that area. But Jordan Grace is the one who can do it. And um, I think they're building to something here. And we're finally getting, like, a storyline originate on BTI. So I think that's a really good thing. Uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comments, folks. Again, I'm going to link you to my podcast about five things that I would that I predict for Impact Wrestling in 22. And I appreciate you swinging by. I'm out. Peace.